Motors. It is a beautiful day for trucking in the USA. As you can see, uh, things have changed a little bit since the last time we were together. Uh, last video I posted was just before Christmas. Uh, I was headed up to Tacoma. And I did a little more running around from there. I'm not going to post those episodes, though. I've been real busy. Didn't have time to put them together. So at this point, I figure they're kind of irrelevant. So we're just going to push those off to the side and we're going to start anew. So uh, I want to introduce everybody to the new, new member of the show here. This is Missy. And uh, she's uh, going to be riding with me. Um, she's already a truck driver. Uh, we've been, uh, you know, hanging out with each other for a couple of months now, talking quite a bit. And uh, she really wanted to learn flatbed, wanted to learn heavy haul. And on top of that, you know, we found out that we really liked each other. And we started dating. So this just kind of became the next logical step. So she's on the truck with me now. And uh, I'm going to be, uh, the channel's going to be following, teaching her how to haul heavy haul and everything that goes along with that. And I think that'll really be a good uh, educational tool for a lot of you guys. We're still gonna do episodes like I have done. Um, not as many. I'm gonna try and keep it to things that are more interesting. I'm gonna start doing more instructional videos now. And I, I wanna give you guys a little bit more in-depth into this side of the industry, because I know that's what a lot of you watch it for. Um, so th this is a big surprise. It's been brewing for a couple of months now. And uh, it finally came to fruition here at the end of last week. So pretty excited about that. Uh, right now we're headed on down to Galveston. We're picking up a track hoe there. That track hoe is going up to Tacoma, Washington. So I'm sure we'll be having some adventures on the way there. Uh, Missy also has a camera. She also is a photographer. So uh, we, we got some cool things happening there. We'll be doing a lot more pictures and stuff. And uh, I'm teaching her how to shoot video. So uh, hopefully this is going to bring a lot more to the channel and you guys will get to see a lot more things that you haven't been able to see before. And, uh, we're even going to do some crazy things from time to time, like rent a car and stick a couple of cameras on the car and get some driving footage, so we're, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. And then a couple of months down the road, I've got another huge surprise brewing that I think you guys are going to absolutely love when it happens. So, a lot of things to really look forward to right now. I'm pretty stoked about it. Anyways, uh, we'll uh, catch up with you guys from down in Galveston. Go say hi to everybody. loaded and uh, we're rolling and uh, Port of Galveston turned into an absolute unmitigated clusterfuck. Uh, that's about the only terms I have for it. Got told we need to be at one place and it turns out we need to be at the other. And they just Everything that has gone wrong possibly this morning has. And then we got loaded and the guy that you know runs around out there was supposed to come by and give us a gate pass. You know he's like oh you know, he never showed up. So we had to go track him down. And it just, I cannot believe what a freaking mess it turned into out there today. So, I'm, uh, <laughs> it has been a long day already, hasn't it? Yes. And so, uh, we were just having a conversation, uh, and uh, decided to uh, rehab that conversation. And what, what was it you were asking? About the PSI. Yeah, uh, yeah, on the, we've got air scales on the, or air gauges on this truck. They're not scales, it's just a pressure gauge. And uh, what we were showing on that, is I was explaining to her, we load the trailer, you just use those as a guide. And all you're really doing using those air gauges as a guide is telling yourself about how much weight you have on. On this truck in particular, now it's not the same for all the truck, you got every all the trucks, you've got to learn your equipment because some equipment just behaves a little bit differently. But for my truck, I got a 2000 Kenworth with an AG200, it's an eight bag suspension with large pipes going to the bags. Um, I'll explain what that means in a minute. But the uh, the air gauge on this thing, at 34,000 pounds, it reads about 65 or so PSI. At 40,000 pounds, it reads about 80,000 PSI. That's on the drives. 
separate scale for the trailer. I'll show you guys that later. Um, generally speaking, it's the drives that you get in trouble on, though, because what happens is uh, you have to keep enough weight back on the trailer because in a lot of states, and on, now we're on permit loads here, so mind you, on a permit load, a permit load has to be non-divisible, right? Meaning it has to be one piece. So if they take a piece of that machine off, it has to go on another truck. Like, let's say you have a track hoe, like we have now, if they take the boom off, or if they take the bucket off the boom, you can't haul that boom on the trailer. It has to go on a separate truck. If the boom's attached, or the bucket's attached to the boom, it's fine. But if you're on a separate, you know, it has to go on a separate vehicle. So it has to be a, a non-divisible load. And uh, so what that means is that you can't take it down into smaller pieces in, in a reasonable amount of time. So this track hoe, one giant piece. So in order to go overweight, it has to be a non-divisible load. And then uh, it, it depends state by state that you're going through what it is that you have to do. So when you're going that route, you come in and you uh, have, each state has their own weight table. And uh, like some states, like Montana, you can go 46,000 on your drives. Um, I think Texas is also 46,000. Washington State's 43,000, other states are 40,000. I think Wyoming's something crazy like 52,000 on two axles. They'll let you go on a, on a non divisible load. They're pretty crazy down there. Um, really just depends on where you are. So those are the types of things you have to check state by state that you're going through. And uh, that's where things get interesting because uh, every once in a while you wind up in a situation where you have a really hard time making something work just to get through a state. And uh, I actually went through that with the load I hauled going home for Christmas. There's no video on that load, but I went through that with the machine. I had to uh, unchain the whole thing once I'd taken it over and weighed it and moved it because uh, I wouldn't have been able to get into Washington because I was 46,000 pounds on the car. Like 44,500, 45,000 on the drives. Kind of give you a good idea where that's at.
Well, good morning, everybody. We're at the uh, Flying Hook in Amarillo. Just getting up. No trailer attached this morning uh, because uh, I've got a surprise I've got to put together for her. And uh, she doesn't even know what it is yet. We just, she just knows we're going somewhere. And uh, so we're headed on over and uh, going to do that thing here this morning. So I'll be taking you guys on for just a little bit of that journey. Uh, we're, I'm not going to be running the camera the whole time, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it all goes. So, uh, <laughs> oh boy. But once uh, we get done with that, uh, I'm going to try and make it to the Wyoming border tonight. Also got one of her friends in Colorado we're going to stop and see that she hasn't seen for a long time since they're like in what, high school or college? Yeah, college. Since they're in college together. So I'm sure that'll be fun. And then uh, try and get up to the Wyoming state line tonight. We're going to hit it hard, uh, get back to the house in Montana tomorrow, uh, spend a day there, taking care of a couple of things, and then we're going to leave Saturday afternoon and be out to uh, Tacoma to deliver on Monday first thing is the plan anyways. So looking forward to that. Getting this one off the trailer, getting ready to go get the next. Uh, we got to stop up in Montana at the office uh, on our way back because uh, the, the office is in northern Montana, the house is in southern Montana. So it means that uh, we'll be uh, uh, having to uh, do it on the way back. We can't do it on the way out because it'll be way too far out of route to do that. So they're going to get us a load coming from Tacoma back. What's so funny? Turn on the trailer. Yeah, I know. I'm swinging it like I'm pulling a freaking 53 foot RGN and I don't have a trailer. A one half mile, take left on left to I 40 West. Went over here, got uh, dinner last night at Buffalo Wild Wings. The nachos were great, the wings were. I was really unimpressed with the wings. I think I only ate like three of them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, anyone who knows me knows I can have a lot of wings. I did a lot of wings. <laughs> I got a little wingy eating machine. So. Take ramp left to I-40 West. Like a Tommy boy. Tommy went wingy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Any idea what it is yet? Excited? Yes. Is that going to tell me? Probably. Yeah. Probably. I think I put it in there by its proper name, so yeah. Put it in there by its what? Proper name. I should have labeled it the big surprise, but... How long have you been nagging at me with this? <laughs> Weeks. I saw a video about it and I was like, yep, we're going. <laughs> it just worked out, we could do it on this trip. Yeah. So
at 7 a.m. I don't know. We're gonna find out. icy out front. It is, it is icy in North Texas this morning. Which means it's going to be an adventure. Now check out all these statues and everything that they have out here. And uh, maybe we'll go read these plaques later, but right now we are uh, going inside. So you think, are you excited? Yeah. Are you excited? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, cutting horse. Yeah. <laughs> Depth charge. He was like one of my favorite horses to read. Depth charge? Yeah, because it's snake. There's three bars. This hall is pretty cool. It's got everybody that's been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Okay, this is really cool here. I saw this on the video. Uh, what this is, is you have essentially the, uh, the horse that started it all. And uh, it's the Bloodlines Foundation chart. It basically tells you where all the quarter horses came from and kind of leads you through the, the lineage. Because you have a couple of those horses that were So here's a kind of a little something from the museum here. They have this timeline that goes here and you start up here at the front and it talks about the people and the horses involved and it goes all the way through this room back here and then it goes all the way over through that room over there. There's a whole lot of information. I've been walking around probably the last hour just reading this stuff. It's, I mean, and Really didn't have enough time to go through everything this morning. I'm, I'm gonna have to come back and do it again, but this is, this is a pretty awesome deal. Huh? What do you think? Totally oh, worth, the, worth the wait? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. What was your favorite part? Um, can I say all of it? <laughs> um, I really liked the Hall of Fame, but that, just the whole idea of the top floor where it goes from the beginning to right now. Yeah. You know, and how they put, you know, what was going on in the world, you know, the actual events in the world as right. also with what's going on in AQHA history. If you see one of those trailers at a show you're going to, it's like, oh man. What? an AQHA trailer. Why is that? It means it's an AQ, well, it means there could be people from here, there. Yeah. And it's, you know, a sanctioned event, so. Definitely want to come back and do it again? Yeah. Maybe next time there'll be ponies. <laughs> yeah, it'd be better to do it in the spring, you know, because I'm sure they'll be doing their, their thing here then. I know, I wonder what they do, because, I mean, that ring's not huge. I'm sure for some people, you know, there's some people who've never seen a horse before, so. Yeah. I'm sure that, you know, there's just a little bit of showing that goes on there or whatever. I mean, it's. They probably do like halter stuff, yeah. confirmation. It's big enough to bring somebody out there and say, hey, look at my pretty horsey. I think you'd never do that, right? No. 
show off my horse to everybody? And they'll be like, this is my horsey, he's pretty, and he's mine. <laughs> no touching. No touching. Maybe a little touching. <laughs> <laughs> you know Cam has. <laughs> Take ramp left to I-40, then exit right. So we're going back to the J now. Gotta go get fueled up. Take the trailer exit back up. 71 on right, then turn left. Get the trailer hooked back up, get fueled up. And uh, we're gonna stop in Denver for just a little bit tonight, not too long, and then we gotta turn and burn to get up to the uh, Wyoming state line. We're just gonna park there. There's a little parking spot right at the border. Um, not gonna be able to go any further than that because it'll be dark by then and we're on an oversize. That, uh, you can run it at night in Colorado, but not in uh, Montana, or excuse me, in Wyoming, so kind of slows us down there a little bit, but it is what it is, so we'll catch up with you guys further down the road. Well, we're about 82 miles from Denver, I uh, just got onto I-70, had this, uh, this May trucking driver the whole way this dude was just desperate to keep people behind him and it just it really sucks his truck was cut at 61 miles an hour would not go any faster than 61 and I passed him once and he got really butthurt about it because we were going uphill when I passed him and you know the it, it obviously it's a big load it's a heavy load it looks heavy it's a hundred thousand pounds what I'm grossed at right now you know, when people see you tearing that ass up, you know, up, up hill and uh, going blowing around them like that, you know, they, they can get a little butt hurt about it. He tried so hard to pinch me, to force me over, you know, to force me to hit the brakes, even though I was already most of the way around it by the time we got to the top of the hill. I mean, it just kind of cracks me up. So then uh, we want to get stopped at the scale, uh, going to a permit check and everything, and uh, he wound up passing us there, got stuck behind him again. And the guy was just like running through a couple of the small towns there. He was just running as hard and as fast as he could go through those small towns just to keep everybody that was behind him behind him. It was pretty ridiculous. And uh, pissing, a lot of pissing a lot of people off. There's a line of like, what, probably six, eight trucks behind him. And then, you know, the, the best part is we get down to the scale house and the dude couldn't even navigate properly. He's like, you know, trying to turn, you know, well, actually, where we're coming off of 287 on a 70. He stays in the in the travel lane and he doesn't get into the turn lane and then he comes swinging you know no turn signal right into the, the turn lane and you know we got to slam on the brakes to keep from driving into the back of him and just you know being an ignorant idiot so and it's, it's unfortunate because I know a couple of people who do work over at that company that are not idiots and uh, you know when you have someone like that it's the turn in the punch bowl they just make everybody look really bad so, you know, that's a thought for you guys, because I know some of you guys have watched this channel, your, your company drivers, your driving trucks that are neutered. You know, this, this truck blue, I mean, got a, got a 475 horse motor instead of an 1850 torque, and it's getting fixed to get bumped up to a 550, 1850 here pretty quick. I got an 18-speed transmission, so I can make this thing pull a lot harder than that company truck that you're driving that's got 1550, 1650 torque, and, you know, 400 horsepower, and, you know, some of those trucks even less. And so when you're at gross, or when you're at, you know, 70 to 80,000 pounds, somewhere in there, I've got the power to outpull you on the hills, even though I'm 100. And a lot of people have the power to go faster. You know, right out here on the interstate, I'm running 69, 70 miles an hour most of the time. And those company trucks can't do that. And I, I pass a lot of trucks in the course of the day, even though I'm big and I'm heavy and I'm wide. And it's just a common courtesy thing. And I think that really separates the good drivers from the bad, because a good driver they'll pull over like there's this one guy he was wanting to go 55 miles an hour probably trying to save money on fuel you know because i mean fuel's been so expensive people trying to make as so much ground as they can so they'll drive 55 and uh which i don't like that method i like to get there get the job done but uh you know some guys they do that to save money on fuel and they, they run a little bit cheaper freight usually when they do that but you know the the guy who was enough professional when he saw me coming up he pulls all the way out on the shoulder and I was able to go just blowing by him. No problem. I mean, you know, smiled, waved, real happy to it. That guy was acting like a professional driver. 
But when you sit there and just go like, ha ha, you know, I can stop with all these trucks behind me, that just says that's an angry person who just has no business being out here on the road. Because, you know, if they're playing games like that with the tra truck, what other types of games are they playing? What other types of things are they doing? You know, it's just not a good situation to get into. And they can cause an accident. They can cause an accident, yeah. People trying to pass you, it's dangerous. And, you know, the just to have that kind of temperament, that type of mentality that, you know, I'm first and everyone behind me belongs behind me. It, you know, it, we're not standing in line at the checkout at the supermarket. You know, this, this, this is the highway. It's a shared space. What about the um, little oversized moment? My what? What about the oversized moment? What oversized moment? Yeah, we had a, uh, <laughs> it was really funny because I, I passed another truck. I don't know if I've got it on video or not. I tried to save it. I don't know if I, if I saved it in time, but there was this uh, oversize, almost the same color as my truck, no lights on top of the sleeper, same lights on the front of the air cleaners as mine, pulling a yellow piece of machinery. He had a dozer on. He was heavier than I was, so he was a two plus two plus two. And so he had a way bigger trailer than I do. So I think, I mean, I'm sure it was heavy. It was probably, I think it was a D6 cat. I didn't notice the model number on it, but I think it was a D6. So a pretty heavy piece of machinery. And uh, he had it loaded up on there. And uh, um, his truck was having issues. He was blowing a lot of blue smoke out of the stacks. I don't know if uh, he was having a reach in issue or what it was, but he was having a real hard time maintaining speed, even on the flats. He could only do about 35 to 45. And so I wanted to pass him and uh, got around him and uh, then uh, I, uh, it was in a passing lane and I come rolling up on his pilot car and she gets over in front of me and starts speeding up. I didn't think anything about it at first, you know, I just thought it was, it was right where the lane ended. And so we're just sitting here booking along, you know, doing 68, 70 miles an hour and making good time and I'm like, yeah, we're making good time and it kind of dawned on us, we're like, I wonder if she thinks that we're him. <laughs> And I'm looking in the mirrors, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, we're going around the corner. I, you can see a little bit further around this thing when you're going around the corner. I'm like looking back there, going through the corner, going, yeah, I don't see him anywhere back there. He's a, he's a long ways back there. I do not I don't know the road. You notice how the road just got instantly better? Yep. I feel like this guy thinks that we're his load. <laughs> his load is Wyoming knows that that's what it does. The wind blows. No. 
And that probably has something to do with Wyoming is the only state that has consistently lost population since 2001. So they're actually going down in population, not up. I think it's kind of funny. So people are moving away. From, more people move away from Wyoming than move to it. I wonder why. No, it's because of the wind and because of the crappy weather and, you know, the economy is not all that great. So, and you, you ever notice, like, some of the towns in Wyoming are really, really unhappy? I don't talk to people. You don't talk to people. Like, you, you go into, like, Rock Springs and, you know, places like that. And you, I, I've always noticed I found a lot of really unhappy people there. And, you know, there's, I mean, from my time, because I'm from Montana, I've spent a lot of time in Wyoming. And I've noticed that alcohol abuse is really bad down there, and drunk driving is really bad. And, you know. It's not a lot of work. Get into a lot of those small towns that are on the two lane, you know, you got a lot of the cops in there that are real big heads, but they got nothing better to do than run around and harass people. Try to make that money, that trooper tax. So we're going to burn it up here, going to stop at the, uh, the Cheyenne Port of Entry up here and uh, get my permits. i got to stop at the state line here and call them to get a clearance number. Because anytime you're going into Wyoming, uh, you, you don't call Wyoming and get a permit. You call them and get a clearance number, which basically just says, hey, I'm on my way. I'll be there in a few. I'll you know, get some on the shoulder here. Looks like they're well off, though. And uh, you, you give them kind of an ETA, and they give you a clearance number, and then you buy your permit at the scale. They want to come out and measure you and everything. So we'll be stopping here at the state line and taking care of that. And there's a little pull out there. And then uh, in one and a quarter miles, arrive at Colorado Wyoming line on we're the right. Stop at Cheyenne and uh, get fuel, and that should give me enough fuel to get all the way home on. So we're pretty well set there. <laughs> oh, Dexter, Dexter, Dexter. Yeah. Did you want to be in the video too? Is that what you did? You want to come up and say hi to everybody? <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see it, but if he pops up between the seats like this, he's like, hi, what's going on up here? <laughs> no. So here we are rolling up on the Montana border. Your first time in Montana. 800 yeah. feet, arrive at Wyoming Montana line. Oh, made Nice little cutout so you can pull over. We'll take a picture right quick. <laughs> What's that? I said it not slide on the ice. All right. We're sliding a little. Woo -hoo. <laughs> All right. Next reminder. Oh, good morning. It is now Friday, day five of this load. We're uh, rolling through Billings, Montana. Just got up, got showers and everything, headed back down to home. So couldn't quite make it all the way in there last night. Uh, well, I, I probably could have if I wouldn't have got stopped at the scale in Cheyenne for so long. But we were in there for half an hour waiting to get a permit just because there were so many people in there. And then I uh, went to get fuel there in Cheyenne at the uh, Flying J. And the pumps weren't working, so I screwed around with that. So I had to stop again in Casper to get fuel there. So little things like that, they'll slow you down when you really don't want them to. But, uh... Getting back on the road now, uh, we're 119 miles from the house, not too bad of a little trip there, gonna get on into town, and uh, once we get there, got some things to take care of today, gotta go visit with the attorney a little bit, some other stuff like that, uh, gotta go see the accountant, all those fun things you get to do when you're in town, gotta start getting some of that stuff taken care of, and then uh, gotta go get this truck all cleaned out tonight and tomorrow. Uh, getting everything yanked out of it and put back into the storage sheds. So everything I just brought back up from Texas, so that'll be nice. We'll get the bunk in the back, fold it up again, and have some more headroom in here, which will be greatly appreciated. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a couple of days in a row now, she sat up in bed, and there's that little dome light on the bottom of that upper bunk. Whacked her face on it. So... Hopefully be no more of that. So we're gonna get on down here. I probably won't check in again with you guys. Well, I might wind up filming something at home. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. It's kind of open-ended at this point. I do not have a plan. So we're gonna leave it at that. And uh, we'll see you when we see you. Oh, good morning.
Good morning. It is Sunday. We uh, got on the road yesterday. Really uneventful day yesterday. Weather's good. Flew down the road. Didn't have an issue one. I uh, got parked last night at Bonner at the town pump there, and they hadn't been plowing their parking lot, so uh, everything was a big slushy mess in there when we pulled in. And, I mean, you're just slushing water. Well, I got up this morning to get going, and all that had frozen overnight, and it snowed more on top of it. So that uh, had uh, created an issue getting going this morning. I had to get up the crowbar and chip the ice away from the tires so we get the truck moving. It was not such a happy camper by the time that was over. Right now, we're up uh, we're about 20 miles from Idaho. Just past a CRST truck here stuck in the ditch. I'll throw the video up for that real quick so you guys can watch it. But yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> he's having a bad day. Um, something I was going to discuss on this, you know, this is good for you to hear because you're starting, you know, to run the mountains and everything. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that watch this, I'm sure, haven't run this country. You know, this stretch of road on I-90, as far as interstates go, I mean, there's worse roads that are not interstates, but as far as interstates go, this is one of the most treacherous roads in the country just because it's so twisty and windy. Uh, we started the time lapse a little ways back there, which you guys will be watching. And uh, with the time lapse, you can see this, this road is just back and forth, twist, turn, twist, turn, twist, turn. And when it starts to get slick and icy in here, it just gets real dangerous. And so you just got to slow down, mind your speed, don't get in a hurry, and you're fine. You know, because they, they do a pretty good job of this. I mean, right now, this is practically a gravel road, because the, the state's been out here just spraying gravel all over the top of this thing, and uh, they're keeping it plowed real good. They do a good job with it. But if you just catch it on the leading edge of the storm when it's just starting to get bad before they've had time to come out here and work on it, this could be a really dangerous stretch of road. Also, you have the ground in here freezes. There's a lot of water in the ground, so it creates frost heaps in this road. So, you know, a lot of people are really intimidated by it. Um, I've seen some crazy things happen over the years. Uh, I actually had this uh, one driver, she was driving for CR England. We're sitting in Meralta, Missoula. I just got done getting fuel in there. And she's putting her chains on in the middle of the parking lot there. And the road was every bit as, you know, same condition this is right here. But she puts her tire chains on and uh, gets out there on the road and starts running down the road. And I pulled out shortly after she did. And I come up behind her. She's doing 55 miles an hour with tire chains on. <laughs> oh, and uh, it, you know, I, I kind of followed a little ways behind her. And this has been, oh, 10 years ago now. I followed a little ways behind her just to see what happened. And those chains come undone, got wrapped up in between the duels, and beat all the cross members out of the floor on the trailer, and the trailer collapsed onto the drives. Nice. And uh, you, you see some really dumb stuff like that happen up here in the wintertime. It's, uh, you don't want to get scared of these roads, because that's what happened. She was scared of the road, and people told her, well, if you're, if you're worried about it, just chain up. Well, <laughs> I guarantee you that's what happened. So it's just a matter of drive the conditions. If it's too bad, you know, you, might need to pull over, take a break, stop, because it is stressful doing this. And I know you, you run into situations where you've got, heck, <laughs> this guy's going for broke transport. I know you have the situations where uh, you got dispatch pushing you and they want you to make those appointments and everything else, but, you know, in, in the wintertime, you just got to remember, no load is worth your truck or your life. And it's not worth the end of your career, because like that CRST driver back there, uh, they probably won't have a job next week. They'll probably be out there looking again, and they're probably going to be getting on one of the trucking forums going, oh, well, I had a wreck. How do I find a job now? And the answer is, hey, you don't. Or one of those ones that wrecked in Oregon yesterday. What's that? Or one of the drivers that wrecked in Oregon Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's also a real bad pile up in Oregon yesterday. We've been having a lot of these big wrecks out here, and what people have to realize, your worst enemy when you're on the ice is speed. You, you get going really fast, and I know you're trying to make time, but you get out there, that speed on the ice, it kills. It is the most dangerous thing. You know, you got to slow down a little bit because it takes longer for everything to react when it's cold. You also don't know there's there's certain things that can happen in the wintertime. Like, you could be running down the road. If you have a little bit of moisture in your blue line on the trailer, it can freeze up that airline. And you'll go to apply the brakes and just nothing will happen. Red line will be working just fine. Blue line got a little moisture in it hit the brakes, brakes won't do anything because it's all froze up. That's why you can be cognizant about checking your brakes, making sure everything works when you're doing your pre-trip. You know, when I'm just getting going, I like to hit the brakes and make sure I fill the trailer. 
drag against me, so I know that the trailer brakes are working. And uh, that's uh, that's one of those things you got to be really careful of. And you get out here, you get going real fast, and then you hit the brakes on your tractor, and nothing happens on the trailer. That's how you jackknife. You know, just push that tractor right around because the tractor will break traction on the drives, and it'll just run you right around into the ditch. And that could very well be because that CRST truck back there. I'm, I'm assuming that's probably what happened to him, or it might be really light on the trailer too, because that's that's another place you get into trouble. Really light load in the trailer, you hit the brakes too hard on the tractor, tractor locks up, trailer slides, pushes you right in, you know, swing, you know, swing that tractor right around. Um, in the wintertime when you're braking out here, I feather the brakes, I'll pump the brakes a little bit. I don't sit there and mash the brakes because, you know, if, if you have to let the ABS system do it for you, you're doing it wrong, in my opinion. That is my opinion. So you go out and get in a wreck because you were driving and, you know, you wreck your truck and you're like, well, hey, renegade trucker said do it this way. Nah, -uh. you know what? You drive at your own risk. You take my advice for what it's worth. You can do it just a quick with the clutch. You don't just jam on Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> and you need to be careful with your use of the Jake brake. Uh, because that's another thing that can happen. If you're on a really, really slick surface, like if you've touched the brakes a couple of times and you felt things getting loose, shut the Jake off. Because you can let off the pedal because you just feel like you need to slow down. That Jake will catch, brake traction, trailer will push you around, and in the ditch you go. And that's why so many of these wrecks get so bad is people don't know how to stop on the ice. And, uh, you know, we're, with what we're seeing with these, how many of those bad wrecks have we had this year? Like four or five now, is it? Where we've had multi truck pile ups where it was like upwards of 100 trucks? Yeah, 10. Maybe like 10 of them? I don't know. I mean, I don't know the exact count, but. It's you not know. even full swing yet either. Yeah. You know, this is, this is the middle of January. Winter's far from over yet. And I know that a lot of the companies that are out there today are spitting people out with horrible, horrible training. They're not teaching you guys, you know, a lot of you guys out there how to do things the right way. So, you know, you're trying to figure it out. And I know a lot of you are going to be watching videos like this because of that. I know also, you know, I'm, I know there's some of you guys out there that are the more experienced drivers who watch my show. And, you know, I know for a lot of you guys, this is redundant. But I'm, I'm doing this for the benefit of the new guys who haven't seen this before. So... It's a lot to think about. It's a lot to consider. And you don't want to get yourself in trouble out here on the ice in, in the wintertime, especially in a place like this, because in some of these places, you go off the edge of the road out here and you wind up down in the ditch down at the bottom there, you know, it might be a couple of days before anybody finds you. Because you wind up down there and snowplow drives past you a couple of times and covers your truck in the snow, the snowplow can't see it. So you, you wind up down there, get covered in snow, you, you might just completely disappear. You know, they've had that happen before where they found people the next spring.